Let's update from 121.5 to 121.6. All right, we're back into everyone's war. And in this tutorial, we'll be updating our 121.5 project to 121.6. As per usual, I still recommend you stick with 121.1. And I also, well, the disclaimer is basically you will have to update to 121.5 in order to update to 121.6. So, so you will have to go through all of the, the, the three, I guess, three update tutorials from 0.1 to 0.3 to 0.3 to 0.4 to 0.5 to 0.6. And now from 0.5 to 0.6. I don't even, listen, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore, okay? <laughs> basically... You have to go through all of them in order. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Otherwise, it would be like a, a two and a half hour tutorial. And I feel like that's a little bit too crazy. Now, this one, as you can see, is not as crazy. Now, there's still quite a few things that have changed. But luckily, it is um, it is all quite quite easy to, to change the individual things. Uh, for the update, of course, we're going to go first and foremost to the new forge website over here we can see the current version let's actually see if they've updated it again it, it has happened before but it is 21.6.5 beta and of course here the blog post once again highly suggested to take a look at this and also of course the primer over here that has basically so much information about all of the things that have changed highly highly recommended to take a look at this if you want to know more about it basically that's a, that's a huge thing so highly recommended. I'll link both of those in the description below. But for us, the most important things are, well, the changes in our Gradle properties file. And that's going to be the version is 21.6.5 beta. That's fine. We can keep the range over here, although I think that we should actually change this to 5 beta over here. And then here, in the hopes that it is 22, we're going to change the version range to 1.22 over here. Minecraft version is, of course, 121.6. And we'll keep the 121.5 mappings for now because mappings have not updated yet. That should be everything we need. So let's reload the Gradle changes. Alternatively, of course, you can open the Gradle tab over here. Reload all Gradle projects. I mean, once again, as per usual, it takes a couple of seconds up to a minute or so. Maybe a sometimes a little bit longer. It shouldn't take too long for me as I've already downloaded all of this. So there you go. Just be patient and let this run through. All right, there we go, 46 seconds, and now we can proceed. In the tutorial mode class, there are a couple of things changed here. The set render layer, obviously, we shouldn't even be using this. However, if we are using this, then what we will have is we will change this to the chunk section layer, apparently, is the name, and then cut out. For some reason, that's the new name of it, so simply select this, control R, and what we can then do is we can simply replace all of those. There we go. That's going to set the render layer. Setting the render layer in the data gen should actually be uh, trivial-ish, as I've seen. Uh, I believe it is actually, let me just, j just for the sake of argument, we're just going to take a look at this. Uh, which ones would I even want to do? I guess um, the, let's say the block models over here. I believe it is literally just a call. It, it doesn't seem to be a call. Is there a call over here? There is also no call here. Okay, so I haven't I haven't checked this out because there was a uh, there was a comment of someone commenting. We'll we'll have to check this out again uh, in a little bit. But luckily, in the mod model provider class, there is actually a change over here, and that is going to be the second boolean that we need to pass in. That's going to be false over here for the oversized in GUI. But then let's actually proceed from top to bottom. First of all, we have in the entities, both the growth chamber entity as well as the pedestal block entity have a change in them. And th that change is that there's no longer any NVT data. It is now a different class. So what we can basically do is replace the, the well, replace the parameters with value output over here. And we're going to call this output. You can see then save additional works. So this is now save additional output in the super, of course, simply passing in the output. Instead of tag, we're saying output there's actually a bit of a different change over here because when we have the serialized nbt we no longer need to put this in individually we can simply say we can simply say inventory dot serialize passing in the output and that is it in the load additional we now have the value input we're going to call this the input of course passing in the input right here and similarly in the inventory over here we're simply then going to call the deserialize passing in the input and that is all we need to change, in this case, for the pedestal. For the growth chamber block entity, similar thing. The save additional method now taking in the value output as its parameter. There we go. And then the first one over here is going to be item handler dot serialize passing in the output. 
and we're just going to change the formatting. There you go. That's going to be that. And then here, instead of the P tag, we simply want to use the output and that will fix that. In the super call, of course, simply passing the output and there we go. And then in the load additional, we also have the value input. So this is just a different way of doing this, basically, for some reason. Uh, I mean, they are going or they are trying to get away from the um, from using the NBT data. So I think that that makes sense. But uh, yeah, I don't know quite why that's the case, because if you look at the value input or the output, it looks fairly straightforward. Now, there are different ones. This is the tag value input and there's an anonymous class over here. Not quite sure how it is used, but fair enough. That's going to be something to take a look at a little bit deeper when we get into 122 as well. Now here, we don't no longer need the .get call. Now there's two things that we can do. We can either use the .get call for the get int, or we can use the .get int or method. And that is actually a one that's a bit better in my opinion. And then no longer use the .get and actually just put in a fallback over here, meaning that if this number for some reason can't be found, then it will simply fall back to this number. And I think that that's a fair thing to do. I think the get int or is a better method to call. That's going to be that, and that would be okay. In terms of the data gen, the tags have changed a little bit. Um, they have not in the block tags, but in the item tags, I believe. Yes, the item tags. Uh, luckily, though, nothing too crazy. The item tags are as follows. It is now in a different folder, so we can simply delete the import or re-import this. There you go. We no longer need the completable future over here. So the block tags are no longer needed, and that should be everything needed here. In terms of other things, I believe everything else should be fine because we've already fixed the issue over here with the client item properties. Indeed, then the data generators, we just want to delete this one right here. And this one right here. So the basically, we no longer need to pass in the block tags into the item tags. And there we go. That's going to be that. And then we can proceed to the entity. In the entity, there's a tiny change. And I wouldn't say tiny, but there's a bit of a change. So we can see the animate walk and the animate method no longer exists. Those are now done with the animations themselves. So in each of your model files with an entity that has an animation, you now want to call private final keyframe animation, or you want to make fields walking animation this is the walking animation there you go animation there we go and then this is the idling animation those are initialized in the constructor so this walking animation is equal to gecko animations that anim walk so this is the walking animation bake passing in the root over here and then this dot idling animation is equal to gecko animations dot anim gecko idle bake passing in the root and there we go and down at the bottom over here, instead of animate walk, we basically call the walking animation dot apply walk. We no longer need to pass in the animation itself because it or it's already known. Here it's the same thing, idling animation dot apply in this case, and we no longer need the animation gecko gecko idle animation over here. So there we go. Only the idle animation state, the agent ticks, and the speed over here, and that is it. In terms of other things, I believe everything else should be fine and that should be good to go. In the chair entity, the compound tags strike once again. So simply hover over this to implement the read additional data and save additional data method or read and add additional save data. There you go. And in the gecko entity, the same thing applies, right? So the additional data no longer takes in a compound tag, but actually a value input over here. This is the input a value output. Sorry, this is the output side, right? So the save data, add save data is the output. We simply add this and there you go. And this same thing here, here's the value input. And that's going to be the input for the read additional save data. We are here. We're once again going to use the get int or method and then just pass in a zero over here instead of the dot get. And I think that that's going to be totally fine. Awesome. That is fantastic. And that's actually all we need here. And we can proceed to the items where there's a little bit of a thing in the append hover text method. Uh, we have seen this previously that this is now deprecated. In uh, Fabric, there is a an easy way to... Oh, an easy way. There is a way that they have designed in order to do this. I've not seen a way to do this in NeoForce. So do keep in mind that while this is deprecated, it will still work for the time being. But most likely in 122 will probably be... Well, it pro probably is going to be removed. So that is a thing to keep in mind. Uh, regardless of that... The rest of the items are fine. 
And I believe that the only last thing here would be the screen, which is also very, very straightforwardly changed. So this was the render type that we've changed, I believe, in 1.1.2. This is now under render pipelines GUI textured instead of the render type. So th while there's not a lot of front facing changes for us in the background, many, many things are changing, right? This is why there's like a render pipeline. So you can see they have changed a whole bunch of things. Like this is all now via the render pipeline. And that is uh, pretty crazy, right? So they're rewriting the entire rendering code, obviously, to get ready for the vibrant visuals update. And I assume this is so for Java. I assume that that's going to be 122, that that the vibrant visuals is going to be released. But we'll see. We'll see. I I just I just hope that we are not getting a 121.7. Then, oh man, that would be a rough one. I'm not gonna lie. That would be a bit of a I, genuinely that would be a rough one. But I guess we'll see. Regardless of that, that would be, I believe, everything we need. Let's just, for the sake of argument, run the client over here. And if there's any issues, obviously, we're going to get notified. And if there's no issues, well, then we can simply jump into the game and uh, see if everything works. And indeed, the ghast is smiling. And we are going to go into our 121.5 world. That should be totally fine. And what we'll see is, well, I mean, first of all, we are in the world. Things are still moving out here. Let's just take a look at a couple of things just for the sake of argument over here. We got this one, we got this one. Let's do the hammer here as well. And let's just see. We can fire our bow. That's pretty awesome. We can still sit on our on our chair over here. We would need a stick or something of that sort to just see, but that should also still work. Absolutely phenomenal. The pedestal still works. There we freaking go. So pretty much, I would say. I mean, most of this still working exactly how you would expect it to. Obviously, there are some issues carried over from the previous updates. So those would still be, well, an issue, I guess. But that would be everything that we have. And that is an update to 121.6. Awesome. I really hope we have left 121 behind us after this. But listen, we never know what Mojang will come up with. Um, it is a, it is a crazy thing. But that's going to be it for this update video. As per usual, the code is going to be linked down below as well as the new Forge resources and everything you, that you might need all linked in the description below. But that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Hope you found this useful and you learned something new and I'll see you all in the next tutorial or series or whatever it might be. Until then. So, yeah.